Hello fellow survivors, this is your buddy RV Guy back again with another little quick video review. And today guys, I want to touch on a subject that I feel is very, very important. A subject that everybody should take into consideration no matter what city, state, country, or part of the world you live in. That subject is survival bags, guys. Now, survival bag is something that you can use when disaster strikes. I can't tell you when disaster is going to strike. It can strike... Uh, any time, any day, anywhere, anyhow, for any reason. But when it does, it's good to know that you have a little piece of home that you can throw on your back and head for the hills and live to see another day. Okay, something that you can use to carry water, food, documents, weapons, um, medicine, anything that you might need to survive once the shit hits the fan. Okay, now the survival bag I use is made by Gonex, a company called Gonex. It's a three-day tactical, 50-liter survival bag, um, and it works off the Molly system, which is good because the Molly system has allowed me to attach pockets on the outside of the bag, so I have the inside of the bag pretty much empty, which allows me to put a lot more stuff inside. So let's check out this Gonex bag, guys, and. Let me tell you why and show you why I think it's a great survival bag. If you like it, maybe you can get one for yourself. Okay, guys. This is the 50 liter tactical backpack by Gonex. Um, it's all black. It's made out of a military type canvas material. Very strong. And what I like about this backpack, guys, is the Molly system. Now, the Mali system was developed by NATO forces, military NATO forces. It's a way of carrying pockets on your, on your backpack, which frees up the inside of your pack so you can carry more things. You might have to carry clothes, uh, tent, medicine, or whatever. But there's a pouch, and each pouch has a different thing, and I'm going to show you that in a second. Now, before I start, I just want to let you know, when you're making a survival bag... I can't tell you what to put inside your bag, all right? I can't tell you, you might live in a climate where you need warm clothes, so you might have uh, thermals in there, socks, gloves, whatever, besides what's going on on the outside here. Um, maybe you're in a warm climate. Shorts, underwears, t-shirts. Maybe you're somebody that needs medicine. A diabetic, you need your insulin. Uh, you know, a number of things. Maybe you have young children. And you need formula, baby formula. You need more of that. That you can put inside. Maybe you just want more cans of food, water, things like that. With the space you free up inside, you can put that in your bag. That's the beauty behind the system. So let's open this up and let's get started. And I'll show you what's inside the bag. Okay. I have the bag laid down. Now things you're going to need inside your bag. Again, I'm not going to get into your clothing situation. I'm not going to get into the weapons or if you should carry a pistol or not. Every state has different laws. If you have a carry permit, you can carry a pistol. If you don't, then you don't. If the shit hits the fan and everything goes down, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but you know what to do. All right? Now, on the front here, first off, we have a... Uh, Open it up. Okay. The first pocket. And this pouch also comes off and you can wear it around your waist. But on the first pocket. You have a magnifying glass. Which can be used to see things if you wear glasses or things are small or tiny. And we also have a. And you can also start fire with it guys. We also have a. Uh, What's up here? Fire starting kit. Okay. We have our matches. You're going to need matches. These are waterproof matches or lighter or some need some means to start fire. We have a fire starter. Okay. Close this back up. All right. We also have another fire starter, right? And another one. You're gonna find out when 
surviving, we go by the rules of three. So one thing is just not going to make it. You're going to need three or more items, okay? Let's say fire starters don't work. None of them's working. I also have a bunch of lighters inside here also. All right, so that's one item. That's not in the bag. That frees up space. Let's put this over to the side up here. All right. On the inside the pouch that's behind the first pouch and you're gonna know that certain things you're gonna need right away so you'll keep the fire starter in the front um, the matches and stuff like that you're gonna readily need to get to those things so you leave them in the front here we have a cook set all right a pair of tongs to grab hot, hot items and a nesting cup cook set all right, now how this works is you put your sticks of kindling inside here, light it up, you feed your fire through the hole, right? You put your cup on top, put whatever you want to cook inside there, and you have yourself a meal. And when the cup gets too hot to hold, that's what this is for. See? Just like that. All right, let's place these items up here. Again, right in the front, you can get to your food readily. On the side here, we have our lights. Our flashlight, always good to have. And our, um, our dome light for our head. Why both? Like I said, you never know. When you can't hold a flashlight, you might need to defend yourself. Put the dome light on, right? Put it on your head and your hands are free so you can defend yourself the flashlight you can use in the nighttime this one you can use also it's always good to have an extra light guys all right let's put these here that's on that side on this side i keep needles and threads in a pill bottles um to stitch up your bag also some dental floss dental, dental floss is great for stitching up your bag guys it's absolutely great it's not gonna rot it's not gonna it's wax it's waterproof it's great not only that you can stitch up yourself if you get wounded with it okay let's put these right up there alrighty let's see now on this pocket here I have a hygiene kit let's move this over a little bit which consists of a toothbrush, some more dental floss, shaving cream, bar of soap, toothpaste, some more dental floss here, Razor with the uh, attached the razor head attachments. Some Q-tip swabs, clean your ears up, and a compact mirror so you can see what you're doing if you need to shave. Um, yeah, the Chloe has a magnifying and a regular glass in it. Put that right here. Okay, now, um, why the uh, hygiene kit because you want to stay clean you want to that's one less thing you have to worry about if you're out there surviving uh in the woods or in the mountains or anywhere you want to stay clean you want to, be able to get you some water and clean yourself up right one last thing to stay worry about this way you fight off disease you fight off infections um you're healthy and you can focus on other stuff okay now on the other side there's another pocket Identical to that the one on the um, other side and I keep miscellaneous things in here um, a poncho for the rain Light up flares So let's say you're on top of a roof or someplace or or you need to be found you can light these up More light up flares 
right? The more you have, the better off you are. Maybe some of these don't work, maybe some do. So, it's good to stack up on as much as you can get. This is leather cord. Leather cord is good to tie down. You might want to tie down a tent or attach something else on this bag. Um, leather cord is very good for that, guys. Okay, this is another small poncho. And this is an emergency blanket um, that reflects your body heat. Small space blanket. These are very good, guys. They'll keep your body warm in a cold situation. You can wrap them up around you, wrap them under your shirt, under your clothes, and maybe it'll keep you from getting uh, catching colds or, or hypothermia or something like that. So let's just put that on the side there. Okay. Now, that's for the front bottom of the bag, guys. In the middle here, I have two other pouches. This is a small military style shovel, and that's on the front pouch. Now, the shovel is very important because you might need to dig a latrine. Um, and these military shovels are good because they're not only shovels, but they're weapons. It falls out like so. You screw it in place, just like this. And the shovel, if you can see here, this has a serrated edge, and it's pointed. This can be used as a weapon, or to dig a latrine to help build a shelter, whatever that you might need, okay? We'll put this up here. Now, on the front of the bag here, I have a first aid kit. Um... Basics are inside here. I'm not going to open it up. It has everything that you need for first aid. But again, your first aid kit might be different. You might have diabetes. You might be a bleeder. You might need, um, you might need a number of stuff. But as a matter of fact, let me open it up, guys. I'll show you what I mean. Okay. All right. Now. My first aid kit consists of a bottle of peroxide, a bottle of alcohol. Again, I got a small flashlight here, a sterile knife, a sterile blade, a small flashlight, some gauze, uh, band-aids, masks. We saw after, um, after COVID that we need masks. We need to protect our, our mouths, our nose and our mouths from ingesting pathogens, okay? So I carry some masks. Um, surgical tape, gloves, rubber gloves, it's always good to protect your hands with rubber gloves, there's a bunch of them here, okay, down here I have some sterile alcohol pads, some more gauze, uh, what are these, cotton, and some more bandages for wounds, things of that nature, tourniquet, um, and a bunch of other stuff. There's some more stuff up in this pouch here, stitching your wounds, needles, thread, there's iodine inside here also, little iodine sticks, Q-tips, all different type of stuff that I might need. But again, yours might be different, guys. Yours might be very, very different. Okay, you might need, like I said, you might need insulin. You might need um, more alcohol, more peroxide, um, certain medications for your children. Um, all different type of stuff that's out there. It depends on the situation, okay? It depends on you and your life situation. All right, let's close this one back up. And again, all this stuff is on the outside. It's, it's readily available to get to. All of these items here are readily available to get to. Now, on the top pouch here, I carry water purifier tablets um i'm not a big fan of water water purifying mechanism things like the straws the sanitizer straws all those things those things are bad man-made and when something's man-made it's subject to error it might be a small crack in it it might have whatever and you're not getting it filtered right and you ingest a pathogen then you got another problem on top of another problem and if society goes down, what hospitals are you going to? 
We saw what happened in COVID. You couldn't get into any hospitals, right? Um, they weren't letting people in there. People were dying left and right in the hospitals, in the nursing homes, and everything else. But with these chlorine and iodine tablets, you drop it in the water, do as the instruction says, and kill off the pathogens, guys. And don't have to worry about that. Or you can boil the water. What is it, 10, 15 minutes of boiling the water? Or you can add, for every gallon, eight little drops of chlorinated bleach in there. And that'll do it. Like I said, this way I'm guaranteed I know I'm good, okay? Let's put these right here. Okay. Now, inside here, I have a way of carrying water. This is a stainless steel water bottle. It'll keep your stuff hot and cold. Um, it's 750 mil milliliters 25 ounces it's a stainless steel water bottle and it's made by a company called new country and it has a little i like it because it has a little thing here you can sip the water it'll keep your water cold and fresh and it's good it's nice to have water it's nice to have fresh water guys that's why i like this bottle now over on this side i have the same type of pocket right here where I keep another way of carrying water this is a stainless steel bottle and I rather go with the stainless steel than plastics guys because you can clean these out there's another way of carrying water this is another um what is it about 25 ounce of water that I can carry okay put that one there All right, now, those are the necessities that you need in your survival bag for eating, for uh, whatever you need to do, um, cleaning yourself, or, or emergencies, starting fires. Doing, and what this is, is this is all on the outside of the bag, guys. All the stuff is on the outside of the bag. The inside of the bag, the inside of the bag is free. So you can put clothes, you can put a tarp to build a tent, you can put maybe another gallon of water maybe um, more medicine, maybe whatever you want, whatever you want. And there's 50 liters of free space inside this bag because of this Molly system, okay? You can put weapons, you can put whatever you want. Also, a good thing about this Gonex bag is it comes with, let it open here. Oh, that's the first, that's the first opening. It comes with a uh, rain protective pouch that allows you, if it's raining, to cover the bag up. You can throw it on your back, here it is. Rain protective pouch that you can cover the bag up. Right, pull it over the bag and it'll protect the inside from getting all wet. Which is another cool little option that they give you. Alright. Put that up there. Again, as far as weapons, knives, tools, that's up to you. I would suggest a sawing tool to cut wood to build shelter. I have one of those also. Maybe I'll do a video on that next. Um, firearms, I can't tell you what to put in your bag or not in your bag. Each state law is different when it comes to carrying a firearm. However, if the shit hits the fan, does it really matter? You know what you have to do. All right? But this is a great bag by Gonex, guys. Very good bag. And one more thing I want to show you guys. Okay, guys. What I have here is one of those little luggage carriers that you can buy. You can pick these up at the little stores. And um, what I do is when I pack the bag with all the stuff that I need, I put it on top of here because let's face it, these bags, okay, these bags, guys, they're heavy. And we're talking about maybe 50, 100 pounds. And I know there's some military guys and there's some ex-military guys and there's some gym junkies who say, oh, I do that every day and blah, blah, blah. And I carry, I'm not a wuss and this, that, and the third and all. But listen to me. What about your mother or your grandmother 
or, or uh, your father, your uncle, or a handicapped person. Because they don't practice this type of stuff every day means they deserve to die? No, of course not. Right? What if they have to carry an oxygen tank with them? You can strap all of that on top of this, and they can walk with their oxygen tank. What if it's somebody with, yeah, you know, they have bad lungs and they need the oxygen tank to breathe while they walk? What if, what if it's, uh, let's, let's just do a scenario. Let's say a nuclear attack, then forget about a world dead anyway, because you'd have to be 100 miles away from the nuclear attack. But let's say they hit us with a, um, EMP pulse, whoever it is, China, terrorists, whatever. And it knocks out all the cars. All the cars, circuitry, and batteries are fried. Right? So we can't start the cars. So we got to walk. Okay? Now you got to pack up all of this stuff. 50 to 100 pounds worth of stuff. Your clothes, your gear, um, your tent, your whatever. Can go inside of the bag. That's the beauty of the Molly system on this bag. Okay? You have a lot of space. You can put extra water, extra medicine, your documents your weapons, whatever, inside the bag. And leave all the other stuff on the outside of the bag where it's readily available. But, let's say it's a biological attack or chemical attack and you got to walk. So you wet your towel, you put it over your face, you put gargle over your eyes, you, you tie it around your mouth and your face and you start walking, right? Now, if you have one of these, it's not a big deal. Just put it up there and pull it. But what if you don't? Right? What if these guys... Um, walking, 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 and you can't carry it no more. It gets too heavy. You ever try carrying a case of water around the block? You can't do it. It's too heavy. Not all of us are spending eight hours in the gym every day. And it doesn't mean the rest of us need to die. Okay? It doesn't mean we're wusses. It doesn't mean anything like that. It just means that we need a little advantage. And that's what this is for. Okay? And besides, let's say you have this on your back and you don't have the cart, but you have this on your back and you're walking, and you run into a bunch of um, people that want to steal your stuff. You're so tired of walking the 30 miles with this stuff on your back, you're not going to fight back. But with this, you're not exhausted. Your hands are free. You can fight back, protect your items, protect yourself, and make it out of there. So um, this is just something to think about, guys. This is my Golden X bag. There's, there's some things that I don't have in here right now because I'm constantly changing the bag. Um, like batteries and, again, the clothing and the shoes and whatnot. I can't tell you what to put in your bag. You make it for yourself, but you make it work. This has been your buddy RB Guy. Until next time. Peace.